everyone. It's been a while, but I finally have some breathing time in between the exams. So I'm gonna go ahead and film some videos for you guys today. Um, and we're gonna get started with how to study for anatomy. So one of the things that was really, really helpful when I was studying for anatomy was actually watching YouTube videos. And that can mean YouTube videos on the content or just the YouTube videos on the dissections as well. So really it can be anywhere, anything that you wanna watch regarding anatomy. So there's a lot of like animated videos that will just talk about um, the different pathways, for example, or the way that the body is in terms of like where the nerves are, what the names of the nerves are, et cetera, et cetera. Or there can also be content that you can watch where you actually see them cutting open a body and um, visualizing the actual human anatomy on a person. So both of those are really, really helpful and I totally recommend watching some YouTube videos, especially if you have downtime and you're feeling a little lazy and you don't really wanna study um, as much, then that's a really good way of still getting some information into your brain, even though it's a very passive way. Uh, but YouTube videos are totally the way to go to study for some anatomy. The next thing you wanna do is if you are artistic, you enjoy drawing, this is gonna be um, the holy grail for you because you can actually just use your notability, you can use any app, or you can also use just paper and pencil and some great colorful pens to just draw out the structures. And that's also gonna be very, very helpful in order for you to um, really encode the memory into your brain. So you're not only you know verbalizing things, but you're now also writing things down, you're drawing things out, and that's really, really gonna be helpful. Um, so I personally never really drew that much in anatomy, I'm not, all that artistic um, in terms of drawing, but I was able to sort of create your, you know, for example, the brachial plexus and the lumbar plexus. Like these are these are things that you're going to have to understand how to draw out. Um, and for those things, you can honestly just do a diagram that would be straight lines and connecting the lines to show the relationship between two objects or two structures. And so just doing that can be really, really helpful. Or if you are artistic, you can go ahead and kind of go all out, even though you might not have all that time, it's pretty helpful to draw things out in anatomy. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is you want to look into your anatomy textbook. So the anatomy textbook that you're gonna be using, um, there's actually like a dissector's atlas and then there can also be a, a different book. So I think we might have had a couple, um, but it's really important to look at the anatomy book, the one, especially the one that has like all the photos of the dissections on it because not only are they very clear cut photos and really showing you what the structures are but there's also labels so you have you know label on everything and anything and that can be a really great way to test yourself and quiz yourself and um, label things yourself to just figure out where everything is in relationship to the other structures that are nearby anatomy is incredibly heavy on memorization um, you have to just remember the brute facts like you just have to know what the structure is and there's sometimes just no other way there's there's no other way of like studying the material other than having to just purely memorize it and there's a lot of it to be memorized so one of the best tools that you can use for just brute memorization is usually flashcards um, and I can totally see in hindsight that if I was using flashcards from the get-go in anatomy I would have done a lot better and so that's really, really important is to be able to um, create flashcards and using Quizlet is really awesome because you can um, embed pictures in your Quizlets. And so you might just wanna put in a picture that shows you what the structure is. And then in the back of the card, you can um, type out what the structure actually is. And then you can quiz yourself on those things. And again, when you're doing anatomy, it's just a lot of memorization, so flashcards are gonna be super helpful. Another great resource to use to memorize everything in anatomy is to actually use the app Notability. So at least that's what I've been using for PT school and um, depending on whatever app you use, it should be totally be fine. But the idea being that you're gonna embed a photo. So you're gonna have a photo, you're gonna take a photo, whatever it is, you're gonna port that into your um, app that you're using of your choice. And so once that photo's in there, you can go ahead and create labels. And once you've created the labels, you can go ahead and maybe write them, write the labels in white. And so if you write the labels in white and the background is white, you're no longer gonna see what it actually says. However, if you use the highlighter feature and highlight over that word, you're now gonna see what the word says. 
And so that's a really good way of quizzing yourself because you can write things down and then try to figure out what that label is and then highlight the word and now you should be able to see what it actually says. Now, another thing that goes hand in hand with all this brute memorization is the use of mnemonics. Mnemonics are super duper helpful because again, you are tr going to try to find a relationship um, between these really just abstract words that you just really don't know what they are. And so, for example, when you are gonna be studying the lumbar plexus, there was a mnemonic that was incredibly helpful and that was, I twice get laid on Fridays. And so if you want, you can Google that and you will see how that works in the lumbar plexus because um, the very first letter of all of those words are indicative of the structure that comes in the order that it's supposed to in your body. So that using mnemonics is incredibly helpful and I totally recommend it for anatomy. The way you can find the mnemonics is use YouTube, use Google, literally search up the word mnemonics for anatomy or mnemonics for brachial plexus, mnemonics for lumbar plexus. Honestly, anything and everything, you can find them on Google and on YouTube and that can be really, really helpful. When you're actually in lab, make sure that you not only know your body really well, but you also know the rest of the bodies in the room really, really well. So that really means knowing the structures in the body when you're dissecting it and then actually going from table to table to the rest of the bodies in lab and also pointing out that day's structures on those bodies as well. The reason that you wanna do this is when you actually are taking exams for anatomy, you do not know which body the structures are going to be pinned in. So it could be any body and any structure could be pinned on any one of the bodies that are in the room. So you really wanna have a good grasp of, well, what does this particular structure look like in body A, body B, body C, etc. Another thing that goes hand in hand with that is taking your teammates to the next table and not only um, studying the body there, but also then teaching it to your classmates, to your lab mates. And so you can teach them, you can you know really take the pointer and point to whatever structure you're studying and say it out loud and teach it to other people. And you're gonna do really, really well on the practicals that way. So another great way to study anatomy is chunking up information. So. For example, when you're studying the entire arm or the entire leg, you can chunk up the information in the sense that you can say, okay, this is the anterior part of the arm, this is the lateral part of the arm, posterior part, medial part. Okay, nice. So now I have those compartments, different ways that you've organized that one limb. Now you can think, okay, well, where does the blood supply come into the anterior part of the arm? Where, What are the nerves that are supplying the anterior or the posterior of the arm? So sort of taking a lot of information and then chunking it down is going to be really, really useful in anatomy because you don't have to memorize, you know, a gazillion facts that way. You, you can instead chunk the information and that's gonna be a lot easier for you to remember. The last tip that I have, do not forget, um, when you are taking your practical, you will miss points if you do not write um, that if the structure that you are labeling is a muscle, a vein, an artery, like you have to be very, very clear as to what that specific structure is. So there are the same names for many arteries and veins. And so you have to be very clear as to what are you looking at. And when you write it down on your test paper, you have to make sure you're writing MM for muscle or N for nerve or V for vein or A for artery. You have to be very clear or else you're gonna miss those points. Um, so that's just a good reminder to do and I wish you guys the best of luck in anatomy. Let me know if you guys have any questions and thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you like the video and if you like physical therapy videos. Bye.